Welcome to Always Analog, where we celebrate the beauty of analog technology in the digital world. So today, we are looking at a typewriter, as some of you may have surmised. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a typewriter, and um, I have uh, over 200 in my collection, so <clears throat> I thought, gee, you know what, I, I should start getting around to some more of these. So anyways, I wanted to um, share this one with you. Uh, and this is a, what we would call a portable manual typewriter. It's in a case. And um, you can see that it's a, a hard case. Uh, and uh, it has a carrying strap to it. Um, here it also has a little key lock. I don't have the key for it. This is the release latch. And I'm gonna have to try to keep the zoom out. I'll take this cover off here. And reveal the typewriter and this is a Hermes 3000 a portable typewriter and this particular model was made in 1962 how do I know that uh, because of the serial number that is on the typewriter every typewriter has a serial number and there is a wonderful resource online if you have a typewriter or you're just interested in typewriters called the Tape Typewriter Database. I'll try to put the link to it uh, in the description of the video. And there you can look up by your serial number um, you, the typewriter you have and find out when it was manufactured. So in this case, this one, this serial number indicates that this is from 1962. Now before we look at the typewriter, let me show you the inside of the case here, uh, which is sort of fun. So it's like, you know, we, uh, we used every, every possible space. Um, so on the inside, now I use this for, this is the, uh, owner's manual or a copy of the owner's manual. I don't have the original one. But here you've got a kind of a spring-loaded clip and that is really designed to hold paper. So you can put sheets of typing paper here. Then there's a couple of brushes up here uh, to be used of course to clean the type slugs and to brush out eraser crumbs uh, and keep keep your Hermes 3000 in optimal uh, shape. So, put this out of the way here. So we can take a closer look at the typewriter itself. Um, it is a Swiss made typewriter, made in Switzerland. Um, I want to, to tilt it upwards so that you can sort of get the idea. People who are fans of typewriters will be very familiar with this machine, but for those of you who maybe don't know a lot about typewriters, um, this sort of has this really curvy, the contours of this machine are really kind of fun and a little funky. Uh, and it is this wonderful sort of, um, I call it a seafoam green, but there might be an official name for this color. Um, and, but uh, it, uh, the, they're all painted this color. I don't know that the Hermes 3000 was available in other colors. Those of you who do watch, who know something about typewriters, you can share that with me. Um, the uh, platen knobs and, and other plastic knobs are made out of this kind of really cool green color plastic. Uh, the 
bottom of the machine is closed. So there's a panel here on the bottom of the machine. It's not open like on so many of the American, uh, not just American, but on a lot of typewriters underneath there is no panel and you you can see the underworkings of the typewriter. So this uh, on the back here, this lifts up to hold, this is a paper, okay, to hold the paper up. Um, that's what that that mechanism does. But on the back too, it here, Hermes, uh, made in Switzerland, uh, uh, Pelliard, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, and distributed in the USA by uh, the corporation in New York. So that is the machine it, uh, from the exterior, sort of the, the little thing. But you, these contours sort of kind of curve over into the, the front here. Now, because I had it in the case, the carriage is locked. There is a lever right here where my thumb is. I'm going to depress that and move the carriage over and that will unlock the carriage. Um, and we can start at the very top of the machine. You'll see there are two plastic knobs. The, this is actually a button and if you depress that on either side it releases the carriage so that you can move it manually like that. And then these of course are the rollers to um, move the platen. This particular machine, I'll see if I can zoom in, we can get a little bit better of a detail, has three line spacing options, one, one and a half, and two. So as you hit the carriage return, uh, and you can see this one sort of droops a little bit, and you see this, the mark that it has left on the top of the, the, the cover from years of kind of going across it. Anyways, you can set this machine for single, one and a half, or double space. Now the um, margins on a Hermes 3000 of this vintage, of this style, are sort of interesting. Um, often you would have the margin um, sets in the back here, uh, but in this case, the margin sets, or at least the ones that you see that indicate where the margins are set, are actually in the paper bale. You see these red lines? This is where the margin is set. So here you can see it's kind of at 16 and 80. So that is how you know where your margins are. And to set the margin, on the sides, on both sides, you have this silver lever right here. So we're, I'm going to attempt to set this margin. So say we wanted to take it to 10. I'm going to bring this lever towards me and we will move the carriage. And you see what's happening with that indicator? It's moving along there. We want it at 10. I guess I'm at 11. All right, then if I change my mind and I say, no, you know what? I want it back here at, say, 20. We would, we would get put the carriage where, either manually or by depressing the space bar, to where we wanted it. And then I'm going to depress this lever. And look at that. And there's our margin at 20. So, that's how it worked, or uh, how it works, I should say, um, with setting a margin on a Hermes 3000. Uh, so that's the paper bale. So it's, again, it, it serves double function as to, to holding the paper down against the platen, but also telling you where your margins are set. And then you have a a paper release lever on this side, here, right here. So if you needed to pull the paper out, um, you could do that by 
releasing this and it would allow you to pull the paper out of the platen. Um, so uh, let's look at the front of the machine. Now you've got um, your ribbon selector right here. So this Hermes 3000 has four settings. It will start at the top, which is the stencil setting, something that those of us of a certain age know what that's for. Um, but a stencil basically allows you to type without leaving an imprint on the paper. And that's to cut a stencil for a mimeograph machine um, or a ditto machine. And so uh, it basically just makes the imprint. But does, uh, the, the, the type slug hits the, 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 ditto, the, the mimeograph master or the ditto master, but doesn't leave a, um, an inked imprint. And then you have the blue dot, which is, in this case, for black ink. So I have a bicolor ribbon, half black, half red. If I want it black, uh, then I put it to the blue. Then it has a gold setting, which brings the ribbon vibrator, which is this, this piece here, where the ribbon comes up, halfway. And so what happens is your type is half black and half red. Black on the top half, red on the bottom half. And then there's a red button if you wanted it all red. So those are your four ribbon settings. This with sort of the arrow, bent arrow pointing back, is your backspace. This is setting a tab. Minus is unsetting a tab. This is to clear all tabs. Um, and then here is your tab button. Now I've seen some Hermi 3000s where the tab button is here and the backspace button is here. If somebody knows if there's a reason for why they're reversed on some machines, perhaps it's, I don't know if, I think they were all made in the same factory, but perhaps it was a particular way for one market, uh, maybe in, in some other country than the other, I don't know. Uh, then this is your margin release. So if you want to go, say, beyond the margin setting, you depress that, whether it's the left margin or the right margin, you heard the bell, we're at our margin stop here, but we want to go a little past there, we just depress that and that will allow us to do that. Then you have your basic keyboard. So uh, this has what we call a carriage uh, shift. So, I'm sorry, not a carriage shift, a basket shift. Uh, I misspoke. This is our carriage. On some typewriters, the carriage goes up and down when you shift. In this case, the basket goes up and down when you shift. Uh, and as you might surmise if you've tried it both ways, this is a, a much lighter touch when you are only moving the basket, which is this mechanism right here, okay, that holds the um, the type slugs and, and the arms, and uh, then having the carriage elevate up and down. Now, uh, I'm going to get a piece of paper and put it in, and we will do a little typing on our 1962 Hermes 3000. I've got a piece of paper. I'm going to put this in here, and we'll bring that around. Um, you know, it occurred to me, someone may ask, and I don't think I mentioned this. This lever right here with this arrow on it. This is what uh, a touch regulator. 
So what that does, it, it either allows for a softer or harder touch. And by touch, I mean the depression of the keys. So there it has four settings. All the way down would be what we would call the softest touch. And then all the way up would be the firmest touch. So the amount of pressure required um, to press the keys down, and everybody's different. It just sort of depends on your typing style and personal preference. So I generally like it kind of in the middle or lower middle. So that's where I have it set. But that's what that is. That's a, a touch regulator. Okay, we've got paper in, and I'm going to move my margin over just a few more spaces here. And let's see uh, if we can do a little typing. Um, and let's see, I haven't typed on this machine for a while, so. So you can see um, the type. It actually has a nice typeface, uh, very much a, a standard serif typeface. Um, this is a uh, 11 character per inch type. So for an American typewriter, it's kind of in between an Elite and a Pica. It almost looks more pica on the page. Not sure what Hermes, how they classified this particular type. It's a nice typing typewriter. Uh, some people who use typewriters a lot um, and writers will tell you that this Hermes 3000 is the greatest typewriter, portable typewriter, or perhaps typewriter period ever produced uh, because of the feel of it. It is a wonderful machine. I love typing on it. Is it my favorite? Mm, it might be in the top 10. Um, there's a lot of typewriters I like uh, as much, uh, if not even a little more than this typewriter. Again, that is a very personal preference, but to set, tell you, this is a really nice machine to type on, and it is a very well-made machine. Of course, you see there is no one key on this machine. So when we do 1962, we use, as we remember, our lowercase l, and that's our one. Whoop. Um, this one does have an exclamation point, so we do have that, but it doesn't have a one. So this is the Hermes 3000 from 1962. Uh, again, another wonderful example of analog technology. So, uh, this is now the year 2022. So, this machine is 60 
years of age. And it still performs the way that it was intended. Uh, and it's still working without the ne necessity of electricity or anything else. I gave it a good cleaning. I found this at a thrift store. Uh, I don't know, maybe a, two years ago. I want to say it was it was under ten dollars. Uh, it was not a big investment, but it was a little dirty, needed to be cleaned, and um, so I uh, I did that, and it works beautifully. So that says something. You often think of all the things we use today and to ask yourself, are these things going to be working properly as they were designed in 60 years? Maybe. I think in a lot of cases, probably not. Uh, but the Hermes 3000 and many other typewriters I have certainly do. Ones that are much older than this one. So, thank you for watching. Please share, like, subscribe. There it is. And I look forward to seeing you again real soon here on Always Analog.